uh, I wanted to start today with a graph and what this, what this graph demonstrates. It's really, it's, we could call it income uh, distribution or uh, by close approximation, a, uh, a consumption levels. And that small, small blue part is at the highest level of, of consumers in the, in the world today, 6.7 billion people. The red represents the semi-affluent, ones that are not consuming, uh, but are starting to, uh, at the same high levels, but are, are moving in that direction very, very quickly, we all know. And that yellow, which looks maybe perhaps green, uh, but uh, that is what they call non-economic actors. We can consider um, certain parts of the world that really haven't engaged in the modern economy. But I would argue now that everybody is a mobile phone call away from someone who has an internet connection in the world, that that yellow is going to turn to red very quickly. So what we have is basically the same amount of resources, uh, all fighting, I, I would say, are all interested in having a better life. Uh, and we also have a condition where everyone in that blue spot right now probably doesn't want to give up that nice life. So, so clearly, I, I'm sure this, everyone has heard a version of this story before, but we clearly have a problem. Uh, and, and what we'd like to do is innovate our way out of it rather than give up uh, uh, parts of our lives that we enjoy. When on, I know this is, many know the answer to this question, and it, as I said before, this could be a, a conference in itself I mentioned this morning. Uh, but what is a green building? Best way to define it, it's, it's a building that, that employs strategies in its design, construction, and operation uh, to reduce energy use and to minimize or eliminate negative impact on the planet. Now, also we could say it, it, a green or sustainable building, it meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I paraphrased a, a UN report from I think 10, 10, 15 years ago. Um, there's other, other areas in green building, natural building for one, or let's call it traditional building styles that are, that are very green, um, that are not very technical, but they're looking at historically, how, how did we heat and cool buildings when we didn't have energy? And shouldn't we look, look at this time period to see if, if maybe some of these strategies weren't so bad after all? And how can we incorporate those in today? The, the mission of the Romania Green Building Council is, in a sense, it, it's a nonprofit association. It's of, of businesses encouraging the market, legislative, and education, uh, educational conditions to promote high performance construction that is both sustainable and profitable. And our other mission, I want to make sure the, uh, to, to clarify, we, we will transform the construction and related industries towards greater environmental responsibility and create an exemplary model for the region. And really, what we, we talk about sustainability, and we can say a true measure of sustainability is that we can build buildings and continue to build buildings for all of the planet and uh, without endangering our, our future self. That, that's a nice goal, but we also recognize the fastest way to get there is to make it profitable, to not fight against the tendencies of business to seek business benefit, but to work and make sure that everybody had, does very well by investing in, in green buildings. There's also other important aspects, safety, comfort, uh, that, that are important to everybody that they don't want to give up. We want to have bright light, we want to have warmth, we want to have cooling in the summer, uh, but, but we need to save energy. We also had a lot of economic opportunity. To talk a little bit about the Green Building Council structure to which uh, we, we have uh, pursued, uh, I mentioned before on, on the left here is the, the United States Green Building Council. Uh, there's other full member councils. Uh, Germany on the end, on the right, just, just joined. Uh, the UK has, a, uh, I'd say, a, a, a vibrant uh, Green Building Council. Uh, Brazil, India, uh, Australia, uh, uh, ma many around the world. There's also what's called emerging councils, and these are basically councils that are not yet full members, but they have applied to be accredited and they're, uh, they're, they're moving in that direction. We have, for example, Argentina, Argentina Spain, uh, uh, Poland, Vietnam, and now Romania. As of two weeks ago, we were officially accepted into the World Green Building Council structure. So that was, uh, I, I would thank my RoGBC team and our founding members for that. Uh, but that is uh, a new development. So we, we're now part of the World Green Building Council. And just to give you a very short history of how this came about, because I think, I think it's important for the mission, uh, just to kind of my own experience 
trying to do, to do green building in Romania. Uh, and, and I say, well, I'll talk about Romania, but I think this could apply in very many places, probably more places than not. Uh, so we sought out to, to renovate and to make more energy efficient and environmentally responsible uh, our, our offices. And this is some before and after pictures. What we did, we did one interesting thing. We, we doubled the usable space of, of the office and we reduced the energy consumption and we added laptops to the equation. So I think from, a, from an energy efficiency point of view, we had uh, a, a very good response. Uh, but we ran into some trouble. If you look at, there's quite a lot of painted surfaces there. When we went to buy eco paint, just paint that has low VOC or volatile organic compounds, all we could find were tiny cans in the store of, of healthy paint. And so unless we wanted to buy 400 to 1,000 of these, which probably, one, is not very eco, and two, is, is very expensive, uh, we, we had to pass on that option. And the other thing, of course, as, as we know, flying it in from somewhere was not a good option either. And so in, in doing this, we started to ask around and find out what's, what's going on in, in, uh, in, in the situation. We'd hear the same stories and, and same, same responses. Uh, home buyers don't care about green. Developers, when we, talk, when we tell people what we wanted to do, they don't want to build green. Uh, all they care about is is the, the uh, cost per, per square meter. Uh, nobody, uh, no, nobody cares about it. Uh, I want something green, but nobody sells anything, and, and nobody wants green things, so why should I sell them? And it was the, the interest, though, was also very fragmented, because when we'd have these discussions, people would say, I care about green, nobody else does, but I, I, I'm thinking about this, but, you, but no one's going to be interested. And so you have about 400 of these conversations and the light bulb goes off that something is here and that, that people are thinking about it and it is, uh, it, it, collectively, we might not see it's a, a, a possibility, but it's there. Obviously come across a, a standard chicken and egg uh, situation. People want green, but no, one, no solution providers want to provide it. What we did, we had uh, basically pulled together, uh, sorry, a couple years ago, we started uh, with uh, some, some representatives of the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, uh, a NGO here called Vitor Plus, and uh, our, our, uh, s some companies, and started to have some discussions about, uh, very simple discussions, how can we promote green construction in Romania? And we just put them together and, and just have very informal discussions. Uh, we use what's called the World Cafe method, where you can take people that, let's say, a developer and environmentalist who might not normally have, uh, uh, let's to put it mildly, civil conversations. We'd put them in uh, uh, a small table with just a few people and give them some colorful pens and paper and tell them to come up with some ideas. And, and we got some very interesting, uh, interesting results. And we saw that people were interested. From this, we were encouraged to put together a, a large conference called Build Green CEE. Uh, we were supported officially by the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development and the Ministry of Development, Public Works and Housing. And uh, I should add that uh, for we had 200 people over the two days of the conference. And this is uh, State Secretary Iremia and Deputy uh, State Secretary Andre. And uh, each ministry brought, uh, I think between the two of them, they brought uh, nine speakers and uh, developed uh, customized presentations for that. So a very good, very good response uh, to what we were trying to do. This is the conference team. And so what, what the conference did is it, it basically said, we're not alone. We, we, I think that, along with many other trends, which I'll talk about, helped to, to tell people that we're not alone in this situation. There's other people thinking about this. And we, at that conference, we announced the intention to form the Romania Green Building Council. And our response, this is the meeting in Bucharest, 30 persons representing 20 companies. This is a meeting in Cluj, just a little bit smaller. From that, we were expecting that we would get three to five uh, companies joined. Uh, by the end of that week, we had 13 companies joined. And uh, while probably within two to three weeks, we had 20 companies, and now we're at 23. So I want to talk a little bit about, uh, it's, I think, a more advanced version of the chicken and egg 
story. It's called the, the Circle of Blame. And it was, uh, the, the term was offered by David Cadman in 2000, um, also by Upstream uh, uh, researchers in sustainable uh, construction. And what the Circle of Blame basically talks about is that no one is ready to move. No one is, is going to go by themselves and, and start this uh, because there's always a good reason not to. And so, for example, we have developers at the bottom. We, we would ask for sustainable uh, buildings, but the investors won't pay for them. And investors, we would fund sustainable buildings, but there's no demand for them. And constructors, and which I would add also solution providers, uh, we can build sustainable buildings, but the developers don't ask for them. And then the occupiers, which are the home buyers, the people who rent the offices and, and rent the apartments, we would like to have sustainable buildings, but there are very few available. And so we can see where this is going. No, no one is really ready to, to move. So when we founded this council, I mentioned 23 companies, but we have something very unusual in the world of green building councils compared to others. It was started in the United States by solution providers. I think they took an impressive step forward, but at the end of the day, they're selling green building solutions. And uh, uh, their job was to convince investors and developers uh, to, to move forward. In Romania, we had a slightly different situation. Uh, roughly 30% uh, of our founding members are developers. And th we have basically, uh, I'll talk a, a little bit about each one, but they've stepped forward and they've saw that this is not just something that they worked out the quick numbers and they, they can make a speculative investment. This is a strategy to, to be here. And uh, so we have companies such as Wilbrook and Wilbrook I think is very interesting because they're, some of their, their uh, projects very clearly identify that green doesn't have to be a life of deprivation. It's an abundant lifestyle and uh, will have a very uh, I think a very strong impact on the market because it can show that, that you can be environmentally responsible without reducing uh, uh, your lifestyle. And I think this is, this is extremely important. Prologis uh, will, will give a, a presentation a little bit later on a very interesting logistics center. Uh, AIG Lincoln, uh, David Lawrence has been uh, joining with me for a few different conferences and uh, I think it's safe to say he's a green building evangelist. Uh, Cascade Group, a very impressive uh, building, Euro Tower, and uh, uh, green building and its energy efficiency, but also sitting very close uh, to a transport hub and built next to a, a metro station, which has already got me thinking this would be an interesting, interesting place. Uh, and, and Kalem Development, Kalem uh, working with Sonai Sierra and, and doing a, a, an interesting green building on, in the retail space. And we talk about investors, uh, we, would, we would fund sustainable buildings, but there is no demand for them. 